The NFL referees have been locked out since June. The uh, NFL owners don't want to pay him an extra $4,000 a game. That's what it would cost. Overall, for a weekend of football, $62,000. Now, I want you to understand something. NFL is a $9 billion industry. This is such an asinine and unnecessary move. You are jeopardizing an incredibly valuable brand. What? Just so you can crush the refs a little bit more and say, oh, yeah, we're going to pay you less than any of the refs of any of the other major leagues. All right, congratulations, but now you have totally screwed things up. And the entire country is rooting for these refs. Why? Look at the debacle from last weekend. They gave San Francisco an extra timeout. The Minnesota coach is like, what are you doing? They're out of timeouts. They're like, I don't know, we just gave them another. Okay, it, the Saints game was a debacle. They, on one of the plays, when, before they went to the booth, they didn't even make a call on the field. What are you reviewing? You didn't even make a call. And then we had a Saints ref. His name is Brian Stropolo. He was sent to be the referee of a Saints game, except after he was hired by the NFL, they found him posing on Facebook in Saints gear. Fail. It's not just that. He brags about how he goes to New Orleans tailgating parties. He's going to ref not a random NFL game, the Saints game. So they had to pull him. LaShawn McCoy, running back for the Eagles, says in the middle of one of the games, one of the refs said to him, come on, you got to pick it up. You're on my fantasy football team. That's a ref in the middle of a game. <laughs> in his game. Okay. It gets worse. Last night, of course, Seattle Green Bay game. What a debacle that was. And at the end, clearly, Golden Tate pushes in one of the worst cases of offensive pass interviews I've ever seen. Pushes off, doesn't get called, clearly doesn't have the ball. Look, you can say at the end that they were both holding the ball, but obviously the Packer player had the ball uh, to his chest, and at one point Tate had lifted his hand from the ball. He didn't have possession of the ball. The whole country agrees to it. What a terrible ending. And then they forgot to kick the extra point. They had to bring the teams back. This is a debacle. What are you doing? Over $4,000 a game? That's why this $9 billion industry is being this cheap and ridiculous. The Lingerie Football League is now mocking the NFL. They're saying, hey, one of the refs, we fired because of incompetence. And now he's in the NFL as a scab ref. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It doesn't get any worse than this. By the way, I don't know that these incredibly rich owners of, this, of the league uh, wanted to do this. And my guess is that they wanted to do the exact opposite. As Steve Young says, he thinks they wanted to crush the union. But it turns out they've accidentally made a case for unions. Because as you look at the union reps, you go, man. Apparently, union equals quality. Non-union scab refs are a disaster. But nonetheless, Paul Ryan, of course, from Wisconsin, upset about the Green Bay game, decides that he's going to sound off on this, and he's got a couple of singers for the president. Watch. Something that was really troubling that had occurred last night. Did you guys watch that Packer game last night? I mean, give me a break. <laughs> It is time to get the real refs. And you know what? It reminds me of President Obama and the economy. If you can't get it right, it's time to get out. I love that for so many reasons. Here is not only Paul Ryan, but actually Scott Walker, the governor of Wisconsin, famous for busting unions, also made a statement like, ah, oh, you got to get the real refs back in. The union refs. Oh, please bring back the union guys. There's great irony in that. By the way, that zinger was horrible. And did you notice that he looks down at his nose before he delivers it? He's like, and then what am I supposed to say about Obama? Okay, <laughs> we've got to get him out of there. Okay, the zingers continue. I half think that these refs work part-time for the Obama administration in the budget office. <laughs> They see the national debt clock staring them in the face. They see a debt crisis, and they just ignore and pretend it didn't even happen. They're trying to pick the winners and losers, and they don't even do that very well. <laughs> All right, now you want to make it political? Okay, let's make it political. Let's have some fun. 
who is actually in league with, if you will, the owners of the league? Well, that would be Mitt Romney by his own admission. Listen. But I got a lot of good friends. Uh, the the, uh, the owner of the, the Miami uh, Dolphins and the New York Jets, both owners are, are friends of mine. But, uh, but let's keep away from New England so that, uh, um, uh, that, that Tom Brady has a better shot of, uh, uh, of picking up uh, a, a championship for us. <laughs> they asked him about football. The only way he could relate to football was bragging about Stephen Ross, the owner of the Dolphins, and Woody Johnson, the owner of the Jets. He's like, yeah, some of my best friends own football teams. Okay, now that's coming back to bite him in the ass a little bit because these are the guys who are saying, hey, you know what? We're not going to pay those refs four thousand dollars. Eighteen of the owners are billionaires. Four thousand dollars to a billionaire. I haven't done the math, but it's got to be around two cents or so. Okay, can you imagine stopping your whole business for about two cents? What are you doing? How incredibly greedy are you? By the way, Woody Johnson, not just a friend of Mitt Romney, one of his campaign chairs. He raises money for Mitt Romney, and he runs New York for Mitt Romney. So, luckily, uh, the chances of Mitt Romney winning New York are about as low as the Jets winning the Super Bowl. You're not the only one with zingers, Paul Ryan.